I sure come back to you today with another Rage Out Legends Champion Guide. Today it's going to be Grizzled Yarl. I love this little dwarf. Helped me out a lot inside the game. I'm sure he can help a lot of you guys out as well. Today I'm going to show you my favorite build for this champion. Talk about why he is so good. Uh, especially for an old school champion in the game. He's still got it compared to a lot of other epics out there. And even some legendaries who have been power crept over the years. So before we do that. Quick little shout out, trying to make these guides happen. We have over 100 guys now on the channel in just a few months. And what is there, like 800 or so champions in the game? So, you know, we're like, you know, 10, 15% through all the champions. Progress, guys. And keep the requests coming, guys. I'm going to make them all happen eventually, right? Malakiz Boz says, or Bose says, love it. Oh, he's in Rock Breaker in the arena for some time. Well, not the best. He was good for the time, as you mentioned. And I'm waiting for Grizzled Jarl. Well, here he is. Uh, another one of my favorite dwarves out there. He's a magic affinity epic champion. He's defense based. He looks pretty cool. It's kind of like nondescript. I mean, his armor's cool. It's just not like colorful or anything like that. But aesthetically, I mean, he's got the big shield going on. He's a pretty cool. Oh, his shield disappeared. What, what, what the heck happened? <laughs> we got a glitch, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? Get it back. Get it. Wow, that is weird. Does he take his shield off of his back? Did I miss that? What is it doing? Okay, this is weird, guys. Grizzled Jarl, what ha happened to his shield? It's stuck in his rear end. Is that supposed to be like that? I've never noticed this before. This is really weird. I almost want to look, I mean, talk. Oh, there it is. He just pulled it out of his rear end. Awesome, guys. Maybe he just does that, and I never noticed it before. <laughs> but anyway, on his A1, he's attack one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction for two turns, which is actually really good. The heal reduction, it's a 50% 100%. Only problem is where this would be bo best served in the game would actually be Fire Knight, right? But he only has a single target or single hitter on that A1, so it does negate his Fire Knight usage. Uh, either way, you got the heal reduction, right? On the A2, Ancestral Shield, now we're talking here. And, and speaking of the shield, he got rid of it again. I guess he's supposed to do that. I just never noticed it. Uh, we have increased defense, big version, and block debuffs, uh, well, only version, right? For one turn of the block debuffs, for two turns on the increased defense. This is on a three-turn cooldown. This is pretty standard when it comes to epic champions that are bringing block debuffs. Getting it for two turns is really a legendary-esque skill, but it's nice to have that big version of increased defense and the block debuffs, similar to a mausoleum mage. On the same ability as well, and again, on a three-turn cooldown, a very, very good support ability. And then Earth Stomp, on a four-turn cooldown, we're bringing a 100% chance on an AoE attack of placing the big version of Decrease Attack on all enemies for two turns. Also destroys each target's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted. Really nice ability here. It's nice to have the increased defense, the block debuffs, and the decrease attack all in the same kit. It really adds to his overall versatility and damage mitigation, right? Between the buffs and the debuff. Of course, we're going to need to have accuracy to land this decrease attack. Not to mention the heal reduction on this champion. Let me go ahead and show you how I built him, guys. A little... I don't want to say unorthodox. Probably too far of a reach there. But I'll show you. I'll show you the builds. And this is particularly for dungeon progression and for faction wars, what I'm about to show you guys right now. I thought I just used him. You know what? Do you guys ever have this where sometimes in certain areas, champ like Live Arena, for example, champions that are rec you recently really used don't show up on your recently used? It's kind of weird. It kind of annoys me. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Because sometimes I want to, especially for Live Arena, right? I kind of want to go in there and just use who I use because sometimes you forget to tag a champion or whatever. Uh, but I, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Here he is, Grizzled Jarl. And that's right. I have him in a shield and a perception set. So I've seen people bi uh, build Grizzled Jarl in bolster, in shield, in perception, and Relentless even? Why Relentless on this champion? Why would you want Relentless? Because taking that extra turn could potentially get the increased defense there all the time on your allies, or way more often than not. Block debuffs up more frequently. And then again, reduce essentially the four turn to a three turn cooldown on this Earth Stomp ability. So Relentless is a viable option as well. I like him in Shield or, or Bolster if you have it. Primarily because 
He is a fairly tanky champion, right? He is defense-based, not HP-based. Usually, we want our HP-based champion to be the one in the shield set. But for me, for progression, again, I like him in a shield because it's not holding him back in any way, certainly. It's not like we need a certain other artifact set, although I would advise maybe just triple perception on this champion. If you build him out with enough crit rate, which it would behoove you to do because of that A3, uh, you could even put him in lifesteal if you wanted to in the real early game, right? But I like shield because for progression, I think it's important. It's not it's not 100% pivotal, but I think it's important to have one shield champion on your team just to help you out, especially if you're not A1 cycling and you're working on a full auto team for any particular area of the game. Having one champion in a shield set is just going to allow you a little bit of time, right? A couple rounds or a couple turns, excuse me, in each round for your champions to get their best abilities off cooldown and just kind of level set everything and prepare yourself for battle and you're not going to get one shot or wiped out in the meantime. So I do have him in the shield. We don't have a ton of HP on this champion, but 18 almost 19k base it scales fairly well for a shield set so for faction wars for ice golem areas like that i like this build we didn't neglect totally his defense either because he does hit fairly hard on his a1 and his a3 as well let me show you his multiplier thanks to hellhades.com we have a 3.5 multiplier on his a1 defense base that's actually pretty hard hitting on the aoe he has a 3.3 defensive multiplier he's not going to be your damage carry on any team but it's nice to get some uh so already obviously all that support all that damage mitigation and then a little bit of damage as well and it does help with his a3 ability as well in terms of the amount of of uh, enemy max HP that we're reducing if we do build them out with 100% crit rate. So I would advise you guys to go ahead and do that as well. So in terms of stat priorities on this champion, we have 100% crit rate. I wouldn't say this is mandatory. I would say it's a real nice to have on this champion because again of that A3 ability and why not capitalize on that damage. Now in this particular build, you could argue, well, if you're going to go shield, you might as well go all in on this champion and go with HP percentage on the gauntlets, maybe defense percentage or maybe HP percentage as well on the chest and just try to get a nice beefy shield. But when you think about it, I mean, we're still getting like a 15k shield, a little bit more than that off of that shield set. It's still a really nice damage mitigator and it's nice to have on your team uh but other than that stat priority speed defense accuracy speed defense accuracy i would say survivability uh you know we kind of want it all we grizzled y'all right but speed is definitely going to be paramount that was the first stat that I'm looking at from this champion to make sure that I have enough of. He's not going to be your first champion to die on your team because he's defense-based, right? Even not prioritizing a ton of defense, we're still able to get it up to a very respectable 3,300 with a lot of survivability on the HP as well, right? I, I mentioned it already, but we do want accuracy on this champion. I don't have him awakened. I kind of wish I did, but... If I did have him waken, I'd probably just go with Dark Resolve in this champion. I think going Dark Resolve and mitigating Freeze, Provoke, True Fear, or going with, <clears throat> excuse me, going with Indomitable, Indomitable Spirit, excuse me, uh, mitigating Stun, Sleep, and Fear. Uh, I think these are great for support champions because we don't want our Revivers, our Healers, or our big buffers to essentially be CC, right? And he's bringing block debuffs. So the champion who's cleansing or bringing block debuffs, you especially want to make sure that they are not CC'd by the enemy team. Otherwise, your entire team is going to be missing out on that very valuable turn of block debuffs. Uh, so for the masteries on this champion, this is an old mastery build. But I'm just sticking with it. I, I see no issues with, with this build. I did go with War Master as my tier 6 option on uh, Grizzled Jarl. Again, a little bit more damage. I went with Life Drinker as well. Heals by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. The reason that I like Life Drinker on this champion is because he's built with 100% crit rate. So he's actually doing some damage. So that heal can be rather significant, okay? On the support side of things, I went with the accuracy. I came down with Exalt in Death. Heals a champ at 10% of the mass HP the first time an enemy is killed in each round. Interesting choice there. I probably would go charge. No, you know what? I like Exalt and Death. Now, I see what I was doing here, right? I wanted to pick up both Arcane Celerity for Turn Meter Boost on debuffs, and I wanted Rapid Response for Turn Meter uh, Increase on buffs. 
I think both of these masteries on a champion that has both debuffs and buffs that you plan on landing on the debuffs, right? I think this is an incredible combo of masteries because you're always going to be getting, the longer the battle, the more turn meter increases you're going to be getting through all of those buffs, uh, you know, going off the enemies, being removed or expiring. So very, very good there. <clears throat> Cycle of Magic, I always talk about it. Don't get discouraged by the 5%. I feel like new players especially get kind of turned off by that. Uh, only 5%. It's a very powerful ability. You know, if it does proc, you get a whole skill just flat out ready to use again. Uh, especially on this champion, it can be extremely valuable on the A2 and the A3 as well. Uh, we have Evil Eye. We came down with Master Hexer. We want to extend the duration of the decrease attack. Uh, and I guess the heal reduction. Why not? And we went with Lasting Gifts. Lasting Gifts are very important on this champion, right? Lasting Gifts, I would say, is, is a must-have on, on Grizzled Yarl because we really want that increased defense and, importantly, the block debuffs to get extended by one turn. That's really, really valuable on both, especially, again, the block debuffs in his kit. So there we go, guys. Those are going to be the masteries on this champion. Uh, really quickly, I'll show you how I have him geared out in terms of artifacts. I do have accuracy on the banner. We don't want to neglect that accuracy. I forego crit damage but I did get a nice double roll in crit damage and I went with HP instead on the amulet and I went with defense on the ring again we're looking for survivability so defense uh, or HP is totally fine on our accessories if you did want to go ahead and get a little bit more damage out of him nothing wrong with going crit damage as well on the amulet uh, we went speed on the boots HP on the chest and then crit rate on the gauntlets so again, I want to flag here for you guys, if you're not going shield or bolster for, you know, for whatever reason, plenty of reasons not to, uh, I would just go defense percentage instead on the chest, okay? But I would try to keep crit rate on the gauntlets if you can, because again, there's so many reasons why we want to get damage from this champion. Good multipliers, you know, uh, more effect out of the A3, etc. Uh, so again, we're looking for speed substat. So I have some like Pretty good double speed roll gear here in the shield set that I wasn't using on any other champion. Why not, right? All right, so there we go, guys. That is it. I already showed you the stats. That's his build. Pretty, I wouldn't say easy champion to build because we do have to care about crit rate and accuracy and speed and survivability. But with that said, you can make cuts if necessary. Uh, most importantly, accuracy speed, right? The, the, the defense and the HP, it's going to come natural. You're going to put one of those on this chest anyway and the accessories. Let me go ahead and show you Grizzly Garl in Faction Wars where I feel like most people will probably be definitely using this champion if they have him unless you're uber, uber endgame, right? So here we go. We have Geomancer. We have Rockbreaker who I did a guide on as I alluded to in the beginning of this video. Uh, I love Rockbreaker. Great control champion. We have Morag Bronzelock and we have Kurzad Depart. Uh, very, very good rare champion as well and then of course grizzled yarl on the team so let's go ahead and run the multi battles because we are in clan versus clan we want to make sure that we are using our faction wars getting those juicy clan versus clan points right so coming in Rockbreaker with the cleanse obviously grizzled yarl let me see okay here he goes with the a3 i mean that wasn't bad damage there right 14 to 20k it's not nuker-esque damage but it's, it's solid, right? You can see Kurzad came in with his A3, I want to say there. And he did less damage than the A3 of Grizzled Jarl. Granted, on Kurzad, we have a uh, two AoE attacks, both on a three-turn cooldown. Quite different champions, but it does put it in perspective a little bit, right? And there you go. Unfortunately, he did use his best A2 ability right out there. Uh, but uh, out the gate, on the or not out the gate, on the last uh, enemy of the last turn. So we'd rather have him start with that. But then he comes in, and again, a very dependable big version decrease attack that's going to do a great job mitigating damage from the enemy team it's nice to have a provoker especially on this round with a stupid man eater i hate man eater uh but here we go it's going to be an ally attack now coming in he goes in with the block with the uh, block debuffs and the increased defense you're seeing the overall utility that this dude is adding to any team and of course what you see here can be applied to doom tower floors you're struggling on if you're anything like me even end game players right you get to a certain stage in Doom Tower, unless you have just like God tier gear, you get to a certain stage in Doom Tower. For me, it's like, I don't know, 105 or something on Doom Tower Hard. 
And then your SEER activation team, it's either not fast enough or whatever, right? It's not getting the job done. So you have to switch to a more kind of tanky strategy. This is where a champion like Grizzled Yarl could definitely help you out, right? Because he's bringing so much in terms of, we already talked about it, all that damage mitigation that he's bringing to the table. Now you'll notice here, guys, obviously, we have that nice juicy shield set as well. And this red boss hits hard. Nice to have that shield set on the team, right? So he's providing that as well. <clears throat> All right, his A1 comes in there. I gotta say, not bad in terms of his A1 damage as well. Here, reduction landed. Why not? Why not, right? We come in there, and this is a really, dude, it's crazy, guys. Maybe some of you guys who have already cleared Faction Wars know what I'm talking about here, but it is wild how difficult this content was when it was released. I remember people complaining about it, like, dude, they were they they way over tuned faction wars. This is ridiculous. I remember struggling with dwarf quip, uh, crypt, especially. I struggled with this for a while, man. And now look at it. I mean, all epic and one rare team easily can clear this content. So, guys, again, I could sit here and show you every dungeon in the game if you wanted to, but what he's bringing to the team is fairly basic. You know, it's it's incredibly valuable. But it's also fairly basic, especially Ice Golem. I love this champion in Ice Golem because, again, he has that block debuffs and the damage mitigation. I mean, everything that he's bringing to the table is extremely important in Ice Golem uh, or, or anywhere that your team's going to get CC'd as well. So, guys, there it is. Grizzled Jarl, a pretty basic guide for you guys. But do not sleep on this dwarf. He's pretty dang good. A great progression champion. You don't see him a ton like in the end-to-end -end game. But definitely a champion that, for me is worth taking to level 60. He is worth booking, and it's pretty mandatory that we book him as well because we do want to get that A3 down to a four turn and, of course, the A2 down to a three turn. So there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know who you want to see a guide on next, and as always, take care, guys.